Um, Graeme is going to have a chat with everyone and tell us all about the QO100 challenge, which I think is going to hopefully stimulate a lot of interest. So, Graeme, over to you. Thank you. <coughs> and thanks, Barry. <coughs> Good afternoon again. I seem to be on an awful lot today. I'm sorry about that. Um, yeah, COVID. Not much goods come from COVID, but I, I think it was instrumental in a number of us getting together in really odd places, very, very limited conditions because we couldn't get together very often. But on a couple of occasions, the subject of QO100, isn't it a shame that it doesn't cover America, came up. And I'm not sure, actually, who had the idea, but where the realisation came, but, uh, and you probably can't see it on this particular map, but this is a footprint that we saw earlier, I think, on Peter's presentation, and the footprint of, of Oscar 100, which sits over Central Africa there, gets very, very close. His, his footprint, he, he did say it, his footprint was 5 and 10 degree elevation. Uh, this footprint shows, in theory, zero degrees of elevation, and it gets very close to Newfoundland, VO1. And we sat there and considered this in, um, obviously, good conditions. And, um, yeah, look. St. John's, the... Um, the elevation, if you can read that, is zip minus 0 0.9. So it's around one degree below the horizon, the, the signal from the satellite. Uh, this line is actually the zero degree. Uh, AMSAT, uh, uh, sorry, no, BATC, I think you, you, this is one of your bits of software, I, I believe, um, Phil. So you can go on the, on the BATC website, look up under... QO100, and you can put in your location, and you get all the, uh, um, you put in your Latin long or your uh, QRA, and it will tell you where to point your aerial, and what the elevation, and the skew, and all those sort of things it are, are. So it's 0 0.9. It's only just below the horizon. Oh, it's so close. I mean, you could go out on a boat here, presumably, but that, that wouldn't count, would it? Um, We've had a couple of conversations about this, and then just a few few weeks or a few months ago, a couple of months ago, we suddenly heard that there was, an, uh, again, as you heard from Peter this morning, there's an Indonesian group that went right out as far as they could uh, in Indonesia uh, to, uh, below, the uh, below the horizon of the, the nominal footprint of, of the QO100. They actually operated and had a number of QSOs uh, from a location at minus 1.2. Now, these are very marginal sort of numbers, aren't they? Um, that's the same map system, and that's where they were operating from, West Java, right there. I don't actually know whether they were high up or low down. I think they were fairly high up. Um, so, oh, were they? Okay. So, that was at minus 1.2. What we're looking at is minus 0.9. Now, I don't know the geography of Newfoundland very well. That's a map from somewhere, old oh, Google Maps. But um, we saw before St. John's, which is the capital. Uh, and you know, that's, that's 0 0.9. If you wanted to work another country, that's a French protectorate or whatever there. So. Uh, closer to, uh, doesn't go very well in the lighting here, but um, just outside St. John's is a place called Signal Hill. Bit of a giveaway of the name. It's the first re transatlantic radio transmission done by Marconi, was from there, apparently, according to that site uh, uh, webpage. And there is also, as well as that fact, it's got a radio amateur club right there as well, but I'll come on to that in a minute. Um, there we go, Signal Hill. And it's the home of the Society of Newfoundland Radio Amateurs, SONRA, 
So if anybody's watching from Newfoundland, I'm talking about you guys. This is the opportunity for you to make the next historic transmission from Newfoundland. So the, the unknowns. Um, will a normal QO100 ground station be sufficient? You know, the 80 centimeter dish, 10 watts of RF, whatever. Or will a large dish and high power on, on, be required on 2.4 gigs for the uplink? Actually unknown. Um, a couple of references there. Uh, way back in 1990s, 30 odd years ago, um, a number of QSOs were had with uh, television across the North Sea from the UK to, to the Netherlands um, uh, by Bob Platts and a whole gr group of people, and I know Noel's done it as well. At that time, this was 10 gigs television. It was FM, it was wideband, and the transmitter was a gun diode. How much power could you get out of a gun diode? I can't remember, but I think it was in the 5 milliwatt region, maybe 10 milliwatts if you had a good one. And they, they had perfect signals going across uh, uh, 200 kilometers across the North Sea at the right time by tropo ducting where the calm weather and I always get this wrong, you've got a cold a warm sea, cold air, and warm air above, or something, and that duct uh, is where the signal is transmitted or carried over the horizon. They did it with five watts, uh, sorry, five milliwatts to a dish or a horn. And do you know what? They, one of them, on one of the occasions, they took the horn or the dish off, so they got an open waveguide, and the signal was still there. So when it works, it obviously really, really works. So, um, if background reference, have, have a read of those, uh, those uh, old CQTVs. They're well worth reading. Uh, another question is, uh, could we get DATV? How much power would you need? How big a dish would you need? Could, we, could they, could someone operate DATV through Oscar 100 from uh, North America? I know, by the way, that there have been operations in Greenland, which is technically North America, um, or it's really North America, but is in the footprint, so that sort of doesn't count, really. This is outside the footprint. So could activity be on T DATV? BATC are, help are going to sponsor a, a, a cup or a trophy for the first DATV um, <laughs> for the first DATV QSO. Um, however, the... Uh, Current uh, secretary of BATC thinks their money is safe. So here's an opportunity to prove Noel Matthews in error. Um, so as it says there, the signals from the ground station will probably be relying on tro tro tropo ducting for the first few miles. So maybe not to operate from the top of Signal Hill, but to go and find a beach right at the sea level, because certainly the North Sea. Uh, North Sea QSOs were done right from a, you know, a gun diode with a dish on a tripod on the beach, right at sea level. Um, so that might be better. It, it might be that we need to have the uplink on 2.4 gig higher up because that's not going to be using the same sort of tropo ducting and maybe the only way to get that across this gap, this 105 kilometer, I think, gap, uh, would be by sort of just brute force, big dish, lots of power. So maybe being high up for that. So the, there's a question of how far apart the transmit and receive stations can be to have a, a, a valid QSO for this, this challenge. Uh, if, we'll work that out on the day, I guess. Uh, what time of year um, would conditions be most favourable? Um, there's a lot of unknowns. Would it be possible or sensible to have a beacon up there, or over there, where, wherever, high up, low down, um, transmitting continuously. So when, when the, if, if the limiting factor is the 2.4 gig uplink, then at least we'll, everybody could rush out there when the signal appears in the transponder. So um, the last question there is, 
the biggest unknown. We don't know wh how accurate the, um, uh, the coverage maps are. We heard about the fact that uh, QO100 is moving around in presumably a figure of eight slightly, so that's shifting it. Is it, it, is it shifting um, just moving, or is it slightly tilting sometimes as well? Um, how, how much the horn antenna, the transmitter, the 10 gig horn on QO100, the coverage, does it, maybe it's got a squint, maybe Indonesia is favored, maybe it doesn't get as far to the west as it does to the east. I, I would hope that the design of the horn was such that it would slightly oversail the earth, but we don't know. Um, so there's lots of unknowns. Um, but having been involved, uh, both uh, BATC and AMSAT UK, having been involved with uh, AMSAT DL in Oscar 100 uh, in establishing, the, establishing uh, or helping to uh, create the, the workings of how we use Oscar 100, the band plans and all the work that Phil and other BATC colleagues do down at Goon Hilly, we thought it would be, I have to say, to be honest, some of us thought, well, wouldn't it be nice to go and do it ourselves, do a de-expedition over there? And we tossed this around, but concluded that, no, it wouldn't be fair, would it? We should let the locals have this, have this opportunity. So we're establishing a challenge for the station that succeeds in having the first two-way two QSO via Oscar 100, narrowband transponder when operating from Newfoundland. That's one, one trophy. There's another one that for the station that succeeds in having more than 100 two-way QSOs, because there will be a pile-up if, right. if it... if you have one QSO, you'll have 500. Well, okay. <laughs> may, 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 maybe uh, the, the winner of the first one also wins the second one, in which case there's only one prize, sorry. Um, and then uh, the one that I'm really looking forward to is the first two-way DATV QSO. So... Um, if you aren't the first, any subsequent operations from there will be eligible to supply to apply for a special certificate. Um, obviously, it would be really interesting to know what people are, are planning, um, what ideas uh, they're working on, and to give uh, us a heads up when an activity is going to take place. Uh, so uh, details of tests being planned and general questions should be submitted, as it says there, to, uh, to awards at AMSAT UK, and uh, any claims for the trophies should go to the same address. So, um, serious science, this, but lots of fun. Um, best wishes, good luck, and good DX. Happy to answer any questions, if there are any. <laughs> this was a light-hearted bit. Cheers. Thanks, Graham. <laughs> it w thank, uh, uh, thank you, Carlos, for that question. Luckily, Noel wasn't listening. Nor, did, nor was the microphone. <laughs> Any other questions? Uh, I'm going to Iceland on a little uh, satellite expedition. Maybe wants to come. That's an easier one. Let me know. Okay. Anything um, else? One at the back. <laughs> Any online questions? Trying to test my knees, aren't you? Yeah, hi, Graham. Uh, maybe I missed it, but how do you define a QSO? Yeah. Is it, has it got to be SSB or CW? Yeah. yeah. Yes. A any? Well, yeah. Mode. You, you could set up an automated station to keep just sending out FT8 and then do it automatically and just leave it there, um, which might be the easy way to at least test the propagation. Pattern. It might be, yeah. Uh, an FT8 type transmission or beacon, why not? It's got to be two way. Yeah, it's got to be two way though, so um, whisper yeah. wouldn't count, I suppose. Any other questions? Phil, are there any questions online? Have we got any viewers from Newfoundland? No? Oh well. Oh well. They'll hear about it soon enough, I hope. Thank you very much indeed. Yes, thank you, Graham.